In this video, we're doing an applied optimization problem, and we've been asked to find the time when velocity is minimum if velocity is given in feet per second by this function, v is equal to t squared minus 8t plus 2. So as with any applied optimization problem, the very first thing you want to do is find the part of the question where you've been asked to minimize or maximize something or find the minimum or find the maximum and identify what it is that you're trying to minimize or maximize. So if we go straight to the word minimum, we see we're looking for the point at which velocity is minimum. So what we want to do is go ahead and underline that velocity is minimum. What that means is that we're going to be trying to minimize velocity. So we're trying to minimize velocity, which means we need a function for velocity. Whatever you're minimizing or maximizing, that's what you're going to need a function for. That's the function you want to be working with. So we're trying to find a function for velocity. Well, in this problem, luckily, we've already been given a function for velocity. It's this function here, v. So we've got a function for velocity. Our next step is always is our function that we need in terms of one variable only. And in this case, it already is. Velocity is in terms of only the variable t, no other variables. So once we have the function we need and it's in terms of one variable only, our next step is always to take the derivative of that function. So the derivative of v, we'll call v prime. And when we take the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to t, we're going to get 2t minus Eight. So that's our derivative. Once we have the derivative, we want to use it to find critical points, which we'll do by setting the derivative equal to zero. So we'll get zero equals 2t minus 8. And then in order to find potential critical points, we just need to solve for the variable. So we'll add 8 to both sides and get 8 is equal to 2t. Dividing both sides by 2, we'll get 4 is equal to t. So t equals 4 is our potential critical point. A critical point is the point at which a function can change direction from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing, which means that that point is an extreme of the function. It's a minimum or it's a maximum. Because we've only found one critical point, this is probably the point at which velocity is minimum, but we need to prove it. The way we prove it is using the first derivative test. And in order to use the first derivative test, here's what we always do. We go ahead and we draw a number line like this, and it's always really simple. We just draw a line. We put the value we found, the potential critical point we found, in the middle. So t equals 4, we'll put right in the middle, t equals 4. Then we want to pick values on either side of t equals 4 that we can test in the first derivative. So you want to pick values that are close to the critical point. So in this case, we'll pick t equals 3, and we'll pick t equals 5 equals 5. These two values, t equals 3 and t equals 5, we're going to test in the first derivative because it's the first derivative test. I always like to label my number line with the notation for the first derivative, in this case v prime, to remind me that I'm going to be testing these values in the function v prime. So I want to plug t equals 3 into v prime. So I'm going to say v prime of 3 is equal to 2 times 3 minus 8. I just plug t equals 3 into the derivative function. So instead of 2 times t minus 8, I said 2 times 3 minus 8. When I solve that, I get 6 minus 8 or negative 2. We'll come back to that in a second, but I want to test this value also, t equals 5. So I'm going to say v prime of 5 is equal to 2 times 5 minus 8, which is going to be 10 minus 8 or positive 2. Now the exact values we find here when we do this test are not important. What's important is whether or not they're positive or negative. So here we got a negative 2, that's a negative value. Here we got positive 2, that's a positive value. All that matters is whether or not they're positive or negative. We want to plot our results on our number line just to give us a really clear visual indication of what's happening at t equals 4. So we said that at t equals 3, the derivative was negative, so we can go ahead and say negative over here. At t equals 5, the derivative was positive, so we'll go ahead and say positive over here. Well, when the derivative is negative, it means that the original function is decreasing. So we can go ahead and draw this decreasing line. When the derivative is positive, it means the original function is increasing. So we can draw an increasing line like this. And I like to just draw arrows like this, decreasing and then increasing. So if our original function is decreasing and then at t equals 4 it changes and it starts increasing, that's a critical point. And what it shows, what we've proven here, 
is that t equals 4 represents a minimum of the original function because the original function you can think of as decreasing to this point and then increasing. So you can literally see that t equals 4 is a minimum of the original function. So we've used the first derivative test to prove that t equals 4 represents a minimum of the function. But at this point, we can't just give our answer t equals 4 and be done because that may not be what the question asks us for. We always, with every applied optimization problem, always have to go back to the original question and make sure we answer the specific question we're being asked. So in this case, we've been asked, find the time when velocity is minimum. So our answer needs to be time, and in this case, that is t equals 4. So when time is 4, and because velocity is in feet per second, when time is 4 seconds, that's the time at which velocity is minimized. So this is the answer that we want to give.